Uh, the subtitle of this meeting is Extremism Online. How do you define extremism? How do these folks inside the Beltway define extremism? You know, one person's extremism is another person's mainstream. It, it's almost impossible to define. The First Amendment basically says the government shouldn't be in the business of defining it. And when the Supreme Court has examined hate speech, and violence in video games and online, the Supreme Court has upheld the right to post all of that because hate speech is protected and, and visualizations of violence, whether real violence that you're seeing a, a, a movie of or whether depicted violence by cartoon figures, absolutely protected. But if I go on one of these platforms, Judge, and incite violence, clearly that's my aim. Am I protected to say it? Great, to speak? great question. The last time the Supreme Court looked at that, 1969, mm. a unanimous opinion that followed many times said the following. All innocuous speech is absolutely protected. And all speech is innocuous when there is time for more speech to rebut or neutralize it. Uh. So as long as there's time in your hypothetical yep. to challenge what you've said, whether or not the challenge comes is irrelevant. As long as there's time for that challenge, your speech is protected and you are not liable for those who follow your commands right. and engage now, in the violence. The other thing, of course, they're wow. looking at is actual live time huh. violence on the Internet. And that does have to be curved, right? Where protected. you show a murder on the, on the Internet. Mm. You're, you're making Justice Alito's dissent in a very famous case two years ago, which is exactly what he said. It didn't show a murder of humans. It showed horrific murders of animals, repellent murders of animals. I don't even want to describe what was on there, because Justice Alito, in his dissent, in order to invigorate the dissent, described this stuff graphically. Majority said, you want to change this? Change the First Amendment. Wow. First Amendment says you can post what you want, and people will, people will decide what they want to look at. Viewers will decide, not the government. All right. Well, we want to move over to Jewel because they, Congress has threatened to produce do, that they produce documents or risk getting a subpoena. I'm wondering if Jewel has a, has a need to be worried about their future because of this. Well, Jewel uh, produces a product which is regulated by the FDA. The problem comes about when others than Juul adulterate the product. Now, Juul can't be responsible if somebody buys a, a case of their products and adulterates them and resells but them. But the, the, the question is whether Juul is responsible for trying to appeal to teenagers, people underage, by coming out with products called Bubble Gum and Captain Crunch and so it's forth that do that. It's hard for me to believe that by calling it Bubble Gum and Captain Crunch, they could credibly say it's not aimed at children. Those are childlike phrases. So who is responsible here? Jewel, the FDA, or the parents? But the, the flavor of these things, very often the, the kids get involved with this stuff because of the flavor, not right. because of the nicotine. And then as a result of the nicotine, they become addicted. So if it's combined with tobacco, it's regulated by the FDA. The FDA has approved and the FDA has approved marketing materials. As long as Jewel complies with FDA approvals, Jewel is immune from litigation stuff. The judge. Not <laughs> immune from litigation. Much. Immune from the consequences of litigation. Understood. Yes. Napolitano, great Pleasure. to see you. Thank Pleasure you very much. David.